People ask me all the time what I mix total ISO with. Honestly, I mix it with everything. Water, egg whites, Jay? Capone, Daisy. Jay, seriously? Don't. All right, guys, Dave Mad Max 6. We are in the city of Torrance, California, with a great IFBB pro, David Fisher. Dave, thanks for having us in your place, man. My pleasure. Thank you. First time on GTV, dude. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad to have you on the channel. Listen, I've been coming to your gym a few times already. I did a, a few uh, videos with Emil Sarchev and some of the great members you have over here. Uh, we love your place, and this is just right after the pandemic, and the place is thriving. Congratulations, man. I'm happy, I'm happy for you. Thank you very much. Uh, we opened two weeks early. Uh, we weren't supposed to open, but we had, went ahead and did it. It was a calculated move I took, and it worked out very well. That is awesome, and I want to talk about this, but before we do this, I kind of want to go back a little bit, because we haven't seen you in the scene in a very long time. I'm a big fan of yours. You're obviously from Canada, which I'm from also. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm from Canada, man. I moved here in 93, uh, Montreal. I'm from Montreal. Are you from Montreal? Yeah. Do you speak French? No. <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, you're not really from there. <laughs> I moved when I was five years old. Really? Yeah. Okay. My dad my dad speaks French, but I don't speak oh, French. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of want to talk about it because obviously you had a very uh, good career as an IFBB pro. You told me off camera that you started working out at 14 years old. Is that right? That's right. I was 14 in the basement of my parents' house with a little weeder weight set. It was yeah. actually my dad's set of weights that he bought from Ben Weeder's house in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, when he was a teenager and got his w first weight set. And that's the weight set I first started with and I still have it. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, the, the HQ, uh, HQ headquarters uh, for Weeder is actually in Montreal. I passed in front of it all the time back then. It's I there. did not know that. Yeah, yes. it's back in Montreal, yeah. Um, so you start working out at 14 years old. When did you actually join a real gym and where was it? Let's see, the first gym was a YMCA. I was a gymnast for 10 years competitively. I placed uh, high in Western, Western Canadian Championships in gymnastics with Olympic dreams, but then I discovered weights and switched to weight training. So it was, I was doing uh, gymnastics at the YMCA and that's what, there was a gym there. And that was my very first gym. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so when did you, how old were you when you actually got the bug of bodybuilding? You said, you know what, I may want to do this as a, as a competitor and start uh, competing, uh, competing as a, how old were you when you started competing? Okay, so the way it started, uh, when, when we were, when I was a gymnast, we were unloading equipment in front of the YMCA from doing a demonstration out in a truck out in front of the YMCA. And this big guy walked by who I later found out was Reed Schindel and he was Mr. Canada. And I still remember this big arm in a t-shirt popping out and I don't remember anything else except this big arm and I stared at that arm as it walked by and I I don't remember what happened after that but that was the first introduction to bodybuilding I ever had wow yeah. um, so you start training uh, uh, you, you kind of just switch from from gymnastic to you know bodybuilding and how long did it take for you to actually decide okay maybe I want to give a shot to this com competitive thing and how did you, how did that come about did someone teach you or how, tell me a little bit what happened so we, I moved uh, I think I was 15 we moved to Calgary from from Winnipeg and uh, started training at this little gym named BJ's gym it was a powerlifting gym BJ was a firefighter he lived upstairs among above the the gym and he put a poster up for a contest that was to be held inside the gym just for members and I don't remember the whole wire I saw it and I wanted to do it and I actually I, so I I got I was wearing a little speedo bathing suit no tan there was seven competitors 
in the it was just a little stage in the gym and I placed third out of seven I was the only kid I was 16 years old wow. the, the other guys were all grown-ups and I remember being disappointed when they called third place because I wanted to win. <laughs> so that was the first one. And then what, what from them? Did you actually start uh, placing, uh, doing like bigger contests? So let's see, after that... Uh, We're going way back right now, I'm taking way Yeah, they, they, he, he, play, he, he had the contest again the next year and then it, I was getting ready for it and they canceled it because they didn't have enough competitors. Mm. And then somehow I found out about the Junior Alberta Championships, and I did that, and I don't remember what I placed. And then the Alberta Championships and a bunch of smaller shows. And then I did the Western Canadian Championships, and I took sixth in my first time. And then I did it again the second year, and I got sixth again. And people thought I was never going to do anything. I heard all the rumors, hey, Dave Fisher's never going to blah, 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 right? <laughs> and then the third time, I won my weight class and the overall and that's when I decided I had to go up against the Americans and I moved to California. Uh, what year was that you moved? Oh boy. I know, I'm aging you. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, not, uh, I don't know, about 30 years ago. Really? I remember yeah, the day like and the year. That was such you, a big deal for me. Remember. March 13, 1993 is when I moved here. Yeah. Oh, when you moved here? Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to no, remember when know. I moved here. I'm no, like, I'm I, I remember when I, I left. You know? you don't I, was, I was 20. Four or really? five or something. I don't yeah, know. I was I was but about I was, twenty. I was sleeping on the lifeguard stands in a sleeping bag down on Venice <laughs> Beach, because you couldn't sleep in your car. I had a little Ford Pinto car, but you're you're not allowed to sleep in your car. So, I'd take my sleeping bag down to the lifeguard stands, roll it out on the, on there, and sleep there, and then get up and when the lifeguards start showing up and go back to my car, and that's oh how I, yeah, yeah, homeless. That's I, I, that's uh, that's a common story uh, for for Venice and bodybuilding. But you uh, you actually won the North American. That's how you got your pro status, right? Right. So the first contest I did in the United States was the Tournament of Champions. That's a big one. It was a big one, and it was there was about 25 guys in my class, light heavyweight, and I won my class and the overall. And it was my first. Show. I hadn't even been in the U.S. for a year. But all the talk at the show was, "Who's the blonde kid from Canada? The blonde kid from Canada." <laughs> that was that was my thing, and from that I got a photo shoot with I think well it was for Muscle Mag International I think it was Irvin Gelb the photographer I believe I don't want to quote the wrong that photographer sounds, right. but I think it was him and that got me started because the magazine Muscle Mag is a Canadian based magazine with Robert Kennedy yep. and he saw it and he liked what he saw he contacted me and wanted to do a column a hardcore bodybuilding column from a Canadian so I started writing for Muscle Mag and it was called Body by Fisher if you go back a long time, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I wrote that for four years, and that kind of gave me stardom, if you want to call it. Everybody knew me, because I was the only one that really wrote their they columns. Wrote columns. I, I'm not, yeah. probably not, well, Muscle Mike's not around anymore, so I can say that, but yeah. nobody, nobody wrote their own columns except me. They were all ghostwriters. Yeah. Um, but mine had personality because it was written by me, okay? So I did that for four years, and then um, I got qualified for the North Americans. But here was the problem. I qualified for North Americans, which is a team thing, because it's Canada, United States, and Mexico. But I wasn't on the Canadian team. Because you were living here. Because I was living here. Yeah. But I couldn't be on the American team, because I was an American citizen. So I had to get special permission from the Canadian president of the Canadian Federation to be on the Canadian team to compete in the North Americans. Was which it Tony Blinn at the time, or do you remember? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So he granted that, and then my first time I took second. Yes, I know second sucks. What year was that? Um, year? Yes, uh, 91. 91. 91, right. And then the next year he granted me permission to do it again because I placed so high and I took second again. <laughs> again. And that was light heavyweight. So the third year I moved up to heavyweight. I was the smallest heavyweight, it was only 209. There was no super heavyweights at the time because they didn't have that class. So everybody over 198 was a heavyweight. I was only 209 out of 25, 30 guys. There was six guys over 240. So it was me and Stan McCrary. Ah, yes, he curly was, top. Yes, yeah. he was 240-ish. Some, uh, so we came down to uh, him and I on stage, and they announced him in second place, and I won, and I got my pro card. And then he got his a couple of years after. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I just wrote to him on Facebook the other day, and he said, it would be different the second time around. I'm like, yeah, okay, well. <laughs> I think we, I think we, we're, we're gonna tag him in this interview so yeah. he can actually watch it. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I said I don't want to go again. So <laughs> it'd be like in, in Rocky when they when he says I don't want a rematch. That's no right. rematch. Yeah. I don't want one. Yeah. <laughs> so you got pro status at 92 then? 
or 93? 93. 93, okay. 93, 93. yeah. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, same. Who would, I think, okay, I'm thinking Thumb Prims or I can't remember Prince, who 93 was. Um, I never competed against him, I don't yeah. think. So my first, the first year I did six pro shows because I wanted a lot of publicity. Wow. And that was really, that was a mistake because I didn't place well by the fifth and sixth show because I was exhausted. But I got a lot of magazine coverage. Yeah. And from that, I got a lot of appearances, so traveling all over the place. So, so it worked out good for that way. So. so what did you do, Dave, to uh, to support yourself while you were here? Obviously, you owned the gym. Now, back then, were you training people? Because I know yeah. personal trainers were really big at, at, at that time. And yeah. I, I've always been a personal trainer. Even yeah. when I was back in Calgary, I was, I was doing a personal training. So okay. I'm very good at it. I've been doing it a long time. You're I still, still doing do it. I still do it now. <laughs> yeah. Not full time, but I like doing it. Yeah. And I enjoy it. That's so you like passing along the knowledge and the new generation? And I just yeah. like coaching. I was a gymnastics coach, so um, I like teaching. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. You, I remember you very, very well in the past, and your, your trademark was definitely conditioning, shredded glutes, always in shape. I don't think you ever showed up at a show where you were off. Well, uh, that's the problem. If you come in a little bit off, they go, oh, Dave's out of shape. I yeah, know. I'm still better than you are, but, yeah, but I'm a little. So you set your own standard, yeah. and once you set that high standard of being shredded, if you're even a little bit off, they go, oh, he's off. That's yeah, right. yeah. So it's, it's tough. Yeah. But at the North Americans, the third time, the judges said, we wanted to give you your card. It was your turn. But they told me you had to earn it. And when I turned around to the back, the, the judges told me later, they said, they saw my shredded glutes and my lower back, and they said, we gave you your pro card. Yeah, there you so, go. Yeah. I remember that very, very clearly. How many shows have you done, uh, and what was the last year you actually competed, Dave? 2006, I did Texas. Okay. Um, I've done about 25 shows in my life, wow. amateur and pro shows. Um, but right after that show in 2006, I tore my bicep. I was moving a big screen TV. It wasn't it's always in, something yeah, like that. It, yeah. it wasn't in the gym. <laughs> tore right off the bone. It was right after the show, and that just killed. I was 43 years old, and I said, well, that's it. Yeah. So I had surgery, had it reattached, and it's all good now. Can you see it on the camera here? Yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah, it's did, did, right down here. So, oh, yeah, at the bottom, okay. Yeah, right there. Because sometimes the at the top. There, yeah. I think j tore it at the top. Yeah, so, yeah sometimes. I, so I don't go heavy anymore. I'll curl 40-pound dumbbells, and that's it, where I used to curl the 80s and wow. even got up to the 100s at one point. Wow. Those days are gone. So after that, I said, that's it, I'm retired. So after that, I briefly went into the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Really? I didn't, I didn't know, know that. that. No. no. took me a couple of years to go through the process. I got hired. Got in, got was in the academy, the whole thing, and in the fifth week of the academy, I tore my hamstring. Oh, jeez. I do a lot of sprinting, a lot of running, and I, even though I was a sprinter when I was very young, I wasn't a sprinter anymore. Were you still jacked when you were in the uh, show? 95. Okay. So I was still big, but yeah. uh, so I tore my hamstring, and they run all the time, so there's just no way I could. Uh, I tried getting through a week of it, and I, I had to leave, and they wanted me to come back and do it again, but I said no. So I decided, hey, it's time. I got to open a gym. So that's when you did it. I started setting my sights on finding a location, opening a gym. So I started not with this location. Started. Were you ever at the yes, little one? Yeah. I found Dexter there. Remember yeah, that? Yes, yes. 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 So started over there ten years ago. Coming up, uh, our anniversary is this July. Ten years. Awesome. And I was there for four years, and then we moved into this location six years ago. This is like it feels like an old. Um, a dealership is that what it was or it, it's this building has been a lot of different things it was a furniture store it's okay. been many different it was a communications building um, but what we say here my idea was a hardcore serious gym but with a touch of class so it's clean very clean I'll see if somebody gets that phone right? oh are you on the clock yes, you got the phone okay <laughs> my manager is here but awesome. yeah <laughs> um, so tell me about the philosophy of the gym because um, I like the fact that it's, you're right, it's still hardcore, it's still serious, people, very people on their phone over here, if you look around, people are training, and uh, a lot of energy in the gym, and that's what we came in to train on Saturday, and we can feel that energy. Right. Well, that's what I hear all the time, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly what that is. Yeah. There's a lot of little things that went into the gym, like the plates. The plates I chose, if you know, they're all old, all metal. different, metal, yeah. all, but they're not all the same, they're all different. And those are hard to find, but I searched for old plates because old plates give that feel to the gym. They don't want those octagonal plastic. Yeah. Those aren't real plates. Yeah. So I got old plates. And, all, and guys in here, they search for the plates they want when they're doing bench. Got to be the same plate. Got to be, you know, and so. And just the little things in here that, uh, I don't know, 
you have to come and try it out. See. I guess I like when when uh, real bodybuilders own the gym. You can always tell. You know, Steve Weinberger, the guy like the guys like you who own a gym, they're very they're very particular at picking the right equipment because they yes. know what works and they know what they like and what. Everything right. in here was handpicked by me. I tried yeah. every piece. I like it. I and the other thing, not every, it's not all the same brand. And right. It's not all the same color because yeah. I don't like that look either. You know, yeah. all one color, all one brand. No, that doesn't give it the right feel either. And the, the, the black ceiling. No gyms have black ceilings. That gives it that cave look, yeah. right? Um, and the, the black and red. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, like and it. it's not all yellow equipment. Or, no, so all the little things are what give it the feel here. The pictures on the wall. No oh, gym, yeah. gyms don't do that. Only hardcore gyms do that. The corporate gyms we talked about i yeah. won't name them you know who they are yeah. they don't do that they don't no. put pictures on the wall so when people walk in here i see their eyes their first time they walk in they look walk in and they're like they're looking at around going wow this is different yeah i like the fact that uh, you've been open for 10 years and obviously you're successful what do you some people say ah oh, owning a gym is not a good business do you agree with that i i it feels to me like your place is packed especially since after the, the pandemic I think people really like uh, coming to a place where, first of all, is owned by a pro bodybuilder. I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, well, describe what you mean by a good business. Am I going to become a billionaire? No. Am I going to be a uh, hundred million dollars in the bank? No. But it's a good business for me. I, I can do what I want. I don't have a high expense. I live in a little studio apartment. I drive an old truck. I don't spend a lot of money. Uh, I'm not going to own a corporate jet. So it's a good business for me. I like it. Yeah. It makes you happy still. Yeah. I like being here. See, the main thing is I like being here. Yeah. I can put in 80 hours a week and I like it. Yeah. And so I don't care how good your business is. If you don't like it, it to me, that's not a good business. I love, I love to hear that. I totally agree. You, we, you, you still have that passion when I talk to you and talk about, about the gym. And we talked a little bit uh, on Saturday. Uh, I think I think the passion that you have, people feel it, and that's what I think it's part of the energy in this place. I still like seeing guys lift big weights, so going over there, do a big squat, and they come and say, "Dave, can you put on this song or that song? I gotta hit this PR or something." And it's like, yeah, yeah. I still get excited about bodybuilding. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So you do still follow it? Because I was when we were talking, like, I don't really follow bodybuilding. Now you're telling me you I still love it, though. I love it, but I don't follow it. I don't know who yeah, the yeah. current Mr. Olympia is. I don't think. I don't even know. See, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Curry. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I didn't know. Did that. you know about Sean Roden before? Yeah. Did you, you knew that. So I knew it, but I don't remember it. Yeah, see, yeah, I'm not yeah, up yeah. on it anymore. I so I don't follow it anymore. I used to follow it all the time, bought all the magazines yeah. every month. Well, there's no oh. magazine. You know I know, that's right. <laughs> but I was in them a lot, so I had to buy them. So right. I wanted to get I have a whole collection of them. Let's talk about the pandemic. So early March, everything shuts down. The whole entire world shuts down. Obviously, you have to follow. I'm sure you didn't like that. But the good thing about that is that you were still able to come here to train yourself and you said you actually made some progress and be able to train right. for once. Well, I didn't think we were going to have to shut down. Everyone says you're going to have to shut that down. It's coming. It was a Monday night or something and it came over the wire and it's like, God, we have to do this. So we shut down. It was supposed to only be two weeks. And I yeah. thought everyone thought, okay, okay, we can do this. Uh, so I kept training my clients and I let my trainers, you know, we snuck in and we trained our clients and we, we, we parked away from the gym and kept the lights low. And so personally I could still make money and my Good. trainers were still allowed to continue making money, Good. but the gym wasn't making anything yeah. and it went on and on and on. And I didn't know if I was still going to have a business because it went 10 weeks yeah. before I made that decision to open after two and a half months. I don't know what. I didn't know if I was going to still survive. I was determined to not fail, but you never know. How you long it's going to go, that's the problem. Know, yeah. and, and you don't know what's going to happen afterwards. What kind of economy are we going to have? I don't know. Uh, but I decided to open on June 1st, and I said, you know, they're saying we can't open yet, but I said, I got to open. And I took that chance, and they came down hard on me. How did they find out you were open? Oh. Just yeah, the yeah. Well, they, it gets around real. Or quick. Someone tell. Probably. Yeah. But it got around. So the city tried to shut me down. The health department tried to shut me down. They all tried to shut me down. Um, I was real nice to them. They come in. I'd be like, "Hi guys, how you doing?" And they, like, Dave, you, you can't be open. I said, "I know, I know." Uh, yeah. <laughs> but and they like, "You're not going to shut down." No, no, I'm not going to shut down. No. <laughs> and they like, "Well, okay." Um, I said, "Okay, guys, see you later." And they come in again the next day. See you day. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, see you tomorrow. <laughs> And then they came in, wrote me a ticket, and okay, thanks. Uh, sorry, Dave, we got to do this. I know, I know, it's all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Tell me how it's been since officially we are able to be reopened all over, pretty much California. 
uh, right now. Tell me how it's been since the Greek grand opening. Your place is jumping, man. So tell me a little bit how you feel about that. Well, see, I opened early, and no other, no other gyms were open yet. So for that two weeks, we were swamped, absolutely I, could, I can't even tell you the lineup. Of the, I had all my staff working. It was another pandemic in here. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, it was re it was crazy, absolutely crazy. So it was very good for me. Well, I like to hear that. I, I'm glad. I'm glad that this is the only gym you have. That's the only business you have, yes, right? Uh, yeah. I don't have any partners. I don't have any investors. It's all, you. It's all me. Wow. And if I have 15 people who make a living out of my gym. Wow. And they need to feed their families and pay their rents, and yeah. I had to open. Wow, that's awesome. Um, tell me a little bit about, there's a lot of um, controversy going on with the mask and everything. Uh, Goals just reopened uh, last Tuesday, and they were saying, well, you don't actually have to wear the mask while you train, which makes sense, uh, but wear it as you get there and wear it when you leave, which I don't really understand the logic, but whatever. And now we saw on TMZ Arnold saying he will boycott uh, Goals Gym and not go if people are not wearing the mask. Um, you don't have that policy over here. You do let people make up their own mind right. and say, hey, if you want to wear it, wear it. But if, if you don't want to wear it, I'm not going to enforce it. Yeah, right. it's, it's optional. Um, Good. We have a few people in here that wear it. They can do that if they want to. I'm not enforcing walking in, wearing it, and walking out, wearing it, because I think that's ridiculous. What's the point of that? Right. So for 20 feet, you got to wear it, and then you can take it off, and then you got to put it on to walk the 20 feet out. Well, I know. There's no logic to that at I all. It doesn't make any. We got hand sanitizer and cleaners and all that stuff all over the gym, so we're doing all that. Yeah. Um, the the social distancing. Well, people are constantly moving. I know. I don't walk around with tape measure. <laughs> well, how are you gonna do that? You know. It's really nice to talk to someone with some sense. I got to tell you, I'm really glad we did this interview because I feel the same way too. But people are just really weird in this in these times and not everybody thinks the same and they get really offended if you don't think the same way they do. I mean, yes, so. they do. Those people that are driving around their cars by themselves wearing, wearing a mask. mask. <laughs> who do they who do they think they're going to get the virus from? The steering wheel? Like <laughs> if you're watching this and you're driving wearing a mask by yourself, what is wrong with you? Really? What is wrong with you? I know. <laughs> oh my god we're on the same wavelength well dave thank you so much for talking on jtv today i love your place guys it's very clean in here even though it's busy uh it's it's one of the cleanest gym i've seen in a long time and uh, i'm really happy to see you thriving you're a good guy i'm a big fan of yours i have been for years it's the first time i do this interview with you on jtv and i'm very very grateful for you to have us here and uh, thank you for doing this, doing this interview today thank you very much right. dave man max six with the great dave fisher for jtv and we're out.